not only colleges and universities, but also tech schools. What is your position on this? Of course, the legislature doesn't have a huge role in who merges with who, but it's a conversation that is, from a fiscal perspective, that is at the forefront. So what is your position on this? You know, I, I'm not a forward or against it, because I believe, if I may be wrong about this, it's more of a, a board of regents that controls that. And if, if education remains equally valuable across the board, it's to me, I don't see a huge problem with it. Uh, I know with Savannah State and the merger and stuff like that, there, there was a lot of problems that came up. Students were unhappy. And I think now it's kind of getting leveled out. And at the same time, when these larger colleges are consuming these smaller campuses, they're forgetting those students. Uh, some you know, closing buildings. Um, I believe Savannah State even lost a lot of food services and availability there. And that, that part of it is wrong. Sometimes consolidating is good. It can actually compact money. It actually can bring more jobs. And we can concentrate one stream of secondary education funding towards a more concentrated thing. But we had to protect those jobs when we consolidate. And we had to make sure that the students are protected. And that was you know, one of the, uh, the just the big things. It, it impacted financial aid. It impacted the services available to students. And it was kind of overnight. So we, we need to make sure there's a process and if everybody on a level playing field. Thank you. Ms. Palmer? That's an interesting question given the environment we're in right now, Jessica. With the COVID-19, we've all seen that the universities, technical colleges, and the schools across the board, public schools and everyone, have had to go to an online system. I think that we are not going to come out of this situation right now with our universities and technical colleges looking the same that they did. I think that the Board of Regents and the Chancellor will be required to consolidate services, perhaps consolidate a lot of administration to cut down on those administration costs so that we can have a good quality educational product delivered to the students across the board, whether they're looking for a uh, four-year college at a research institution or whether they're looking for a technical college uh, education. So. I think that you're going to see more of these consolidations across the board. You're going to see more online learning. And the Chancellor and the Board of Regents are going to be required by the taxpayers to provide services at a lower cost. They're going to have to work on that hard and fast right now. And as we come out of this COVID-19 quarantine and try to start school back so that students can go to a physical building to school in the fall or whenever it's deemed appropriate and safe, that the face of higher education is definitely going to be different, but at the same time, some of it will be the same. So students' needs can be met, whether they want to have an online education or they want to go to the brick and mortar uh, opportunity so that they can have that traditional college experience. But times are changing, we've all got to face it. And as a senator, if we can have any pact, impact on that, it will be impacted by the bills, uh, the budget bills that are passed by the legislature. And we intend to look closely at that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hickman? Jessica, as I stated earlier, um, education has got to be a, the number one priority. If we, education is the foundation of what we all are. If we don't have an educated environment or educated workforce, then we don't have a workforce. I was very fortunate to be uh, chairman of the board of Georgia Southern University Foundation during the merger of Georgia Southern Armstrong. The foundation merged 100% vote on both sides. Now, I, I think one thing I want to make sure is that, that we don't get down to this all about the dollars, because it's not about dollars. It's about dollars and convenience. I'm a first generation college student. My wife's a first generation college student. If it hadn't been for Georgia Southern being so close to us, I don't know what I, I would have done. I probably would have, I would have went somewhere probably, but I'd have had a lot of student debt with me. We got a lot of a lot of kids. Uh, Joy and I have a have a scholarship at Georgia Southern, uh, an endowed scholarship, and it's given each year to a first generation college student, a first generation college student that lives south of Macon, and got at least a 3.0 GPA. So I understand the I understand the convenience of education, how important it is. I also want to say that uh, it it it. it it's not all about dollars, it is about convenience, but we need to balance the two. And I think, you know, if we, talk, we talked the Constitution here earlier, we talked about the Declaration of Independence earlier. Both of those documents were drawn upon compromise. Those, those people got together and they worked out what's best for, for everybody. And that's what we need to do. Thank you. Dr. Wilkie? 
So uh, consolidation, unfortunately, is majority is about uh, money. Uh, that was part of the reason, or the main reason, that Georgia Southern uh, consolidated with Armstrong State. I, I too uh, agree that uh, this needs to be local. Uh, all students don't fit into a big university. Uh, they need to have uh, their choice uh, moving forward when it comes to uh, that form of education. Uh, my concern also is that we had four nurses who, who got killed tragically on the way from Georgia Southern to Savannah for, uh, to work and to be educated there too as well. My son uh, had to take a class last summer at uh, Armstrong campus, uh, and I always uh, held my breath as he drove back and forth from Statesboro to Savannah. Everybody knows uh, the traffic issues as you get to, uh, closer to Pula. So consolidation needs to be done on a case-by-case -case basis. I do agree that uh, all schools uh, are not created equal, that uh, as far as the experience that the, uh, that the student uh, uh, comes away with, I do believe that technology, technology may alleviate some of this because uh, with this current uh, uh, virus pandemic that we have, uh, I, I believe not every student is gonna have to uh, be on, in a brick and mortar type of um, university. A lot of this will be done online. So that may actually uh, solve it uh, to some degree. This is a Board of Regents issue, but we're certainly happy to uh, discuss with them. Thank you.